Hello, in this lecture we'll talk about Sylvester's problem. Consider a set of endpoints in the plane. In this set, we call a line that passes through exactly two points an ordinary line. Put differently, connect two points with a line. If no other point lies on this line, then we call it an ordinary line. For a point set P, we call the number of ordinary lines with M of P. So this is a function from a set of points to natural numbers. With this definition, the Sylvester's problem is the following. We would like to prove that there is at least one ordinary line unless all the points of the point set lie on the same line. Let's look at one very famous proof of this uh, theorem. Consider two points and connect them with a the line L. There could be other points on this line as well, but we don't care about that for now. Since all the points are not on the same line, it follows that there exists another point that is not on this line L. Among those points, look at the closest one. That defines a distance H of L from a point that is not on L to this line L. Now among all the possible lines L, consider the smallest distance H of L. And let's denote this the smallest possible distance with H. The distance h is the smallest possible distance between a line and a point. Let's denote this distance, this smallest possible distance with h. And let's assume that this is the line that achieves this minimum distance, and the closest point on this line to this point is x. So if this line contains two points, but then we're done. So assume there are at least three points on this line. The point x divides the line into two pieces the part of the line that is to the left of x that includes also x, and the part of the line that includes x and is to the right of x. Without loss of generality, we can assume that one of these pieces has at least two points. Let's say the left piece has two points, b and c. We would like to claim that the point c has a smaller distance to line ab than h, since we assumed h was the smallest possible distance, this would give us a contradiction, and it would imply that there cannot be more than two points on this line L. Let's add some notations to the picture. Let's call this point x prime and this angle alpha. We'd like to prove that the distance from point A to x is larger than the distance from point C to x prime. To do that, we'll need to use some geometry, even though from the picture it's sort of the obvious that this is true. So since the triangles B, C, and X prime, and A, B, and X are right angles, and these two angles are the right angles, and since these triangles share a common angle alpha, it follows that these two triangles are similar. What it follows is the following. It means that AB divided by BC equals AX divided by C, X prime. This is because AB looks at the right angle in the first triangle and BC looks at the right angle in the second triangle. AX looks at the same angle alpha in the first triangle and CX prime looks at the same angle alpha in the second triangle. Since they're both uh, same similar triangle, it follows that these two ratios should be equal. But from the picture, we know that BC it is smaller or equal at most to the distance bx. Furthermore, bx is smaller than the distance ab. This is because ab is the largest edge in the distance ax and b. This is because it's looking at the right angle. So we can conclude that bc is smaller than ab. And thus it follows that this ratio is strictly bigger than 1. Since this ratio is bigger than 1, it follows that AX is larger than CX prime, which means the distance from point A to this line is larger than the distance from point C to the line AB. And since we started with the assumption that this distance was the smallest possible distance, we get to a contradiction. And in turn, this rules out that this line has more than two points on it. So this concludes the first proof of Sylvester's problem. We proved using a geometric argument based on the 
uh, some minimum distance, that there exists one ordinary line among any set of endpoints in the plane unless all of them lie on the same line. Next, we'll look at some other proofs of this, this theorem, and especially proofs that prove slightly more than what we just proved here.